stomping and swatting, rampaging and body slamming. That's right, it's Monster Apocalypse from Mythic Games. In this monster model massacre, two players take on the role of agenda leaders, each controlling powerful monsters and units. One side attempts to protect the world from the other in an epic battle of mechs, monsters, and mayhem. The first player to defeat the opposing player's monsters wins the game. Setup begins with agenda selection. There are two opposing forces in Monster Apocalypse, each known as an agenda. The protector's agenda, those who would protect Earth from those who would destroy it, and the destroyer's agenda, a loose alliance of villains with a thirst for destruction. Each agenda is further divided into factions, each of which have monsters and units. Each player chooses an agenda and will assemble forces from their applicable factions. Players first agree on an equal number of monsters they'll use in the game. Today we're setting up for a one monster on each agenda game. Each player takes one, along with a number of units. These are smaller forces aligned with each faction. In a single monster game, players take 15 units. In a two monster game, it's 20, and in a three monster game, it's 25. Players also bring anywhere from six to 12 buildings, not to exceed more than four of any one type. They also take the stat cards for all the monsters, units, buildings, and assets. Next, each player rolls five action dice to determine the setup roll. The player who rolls the most strikes wins and will take the first turn in gameplay. The loser of this rule gets to choose the battle map for the game, setting it center. The winner of this role chooses the color zones, either red or blue, on the map that each player will use. A player may only spawn their agenda's forces on their corresponding color spaces. Each player sits on that side of the map, bringing their models onto the table nearby. Players then take turns placing buildings on the foundation spaces of the battle map, beginning with the winning player. When placing, players must first fill green bordered foundation spaces before placing in any yellow spaces. Once all buildings have been placed, the winner player places their monsters, then the opposing player does the same. Monsters must have their bases touching the player's side of the battle map. Units sit in a reserve next to the board for now. Finally, each player should have 10 action dice in their unit pool and 10 power dice, as well as at least six boost dice in their dice well. Before we explain gameplay, let's look at the stat cards for the models. Stat cards include name, speed value, defense, cost, and attack stats, which come in three types, brawl, blast, and power. Some also have special rules. Monsters notably have a larger card and are two-sided. If their health, which is tracked on the bottom of the card, is ever reduced enough, they're going to flip over onto their hyperform side. More on that in a sec. Gameplay occurs in turns, beginning with the winner of the setup roll. On their turn, the active player chooses from one of two types of activations, monster activation and unit activation. A player's ability to take either activation depends on their dice placement. Let's check that out. Each player has their own dice pool dashboard, which includes their dice well, power dice, and monsters and unit pools. To take a monster action, a player must have dice in the monster pool. The same respectively with unit activations, they must have dice in the unit pool. Since players start the game with dice in their unit pool, each player's first turn is a unit activation. Once all steps of an activation are complete, the player's turn is complete, and play passes to their opponent. Let's look at unit activation first, since it's our only option at the top of the game. Unit activation is divided into four phases. Spawn phase, advancement phase, attack phase, and push phase. First, in the spawn phase, a player may spend action dice to spawn units onto the battle map from their reserve. Spending a die from the unit pool simply means moving it to the monster pool. To spawn a unit, the player must spend a number of dice equal to the unit's cost, located on their stat card. 
they place the units on one of their spawn points. If a spawn point is occupied, the player may spend an action die to move that unit to a free adjacent space first. Next, in the advancement phase, each of the active player's units on the board, not the monsters though, remember we're in a unit activation, may make a full advance. When moving on the board, an advance allows movement a number of spaces equal to their speed stat on their stat card. Movement must be orthogonal, up, down, left, right, but one move within the advance is allowed to be diagonal. Models cannot share spaces, and some restrictions exist for each type. Monsters can move through spaces occupied by anything except buildings and other monsters, while units must move around most objects, with the exception of allied models and assets. Once a unit has advanced, it could not advance again this turn. Additionally, the terrain on the map dictates certain restrictions as well. Open terrain provides normal movement, while rough terrain requires at least two speed to enter. Impassable terrain prevents units, but not monsters, from entering that space entirely. Next, in the attack phase, the active player may attack with any number of units on the battle map, either individually or as a combined attack. Each unit attacking requires one action die to be spent from the unit pool, and each unit can only attack once per turn. Finally, in the push phase, the active player may move any remaining action dice in their unit pool over their monster pool, and that's a unit activation. A player's turn is now complete and play passes to their opponent. Let's look at a monster activation now, the other option on your turn. These are also divided into four phases. Power phase, advancement phase, attack phase, and push phase. First up in the power phase, the active player powers their monster based on their forces placement on the map. Each battle map includes spaces labeled power zones, negative zones, and spawn zones. During this phase, the active player adds one power die to their power pool for each power zone their units hold and for each building they currently secure. Additionally, the opponent loses one power dice from their power pool for each negative zone the active player holds. Next up in the advancement phase, each monster may make a full advance. Unlike units, monster advancement includes an optional additional movement known as stepping. By spending an action die, one monster may move one space in any direction, including diagonally. The stepping ability may actually be used anytime after the power phase, including after the attacks resolve. Next, in the attack phase, the active player spins dice from the monster pool to make an attack, either brawl, blast, or power. Unless they have special rules, each monster can only attack once per monster activation. Attacking occurs in four quick steps. First, the attacker chooses an attack type. Units generally only have one option, while monsters can select from brawl, blast, and power attacks. They then choose a target, which might be an enemy model, an asset, or a building. For brawl attacks, the target must be adjacent. For blast attacks, within the listed range on the stat card, power attacks specify in their targeting rules. Next, they build the dice pool for their attack roll. Each attack roll must include one die from the active pool, either monster or unit. A player may add more action dice up to the corresponding stats value. Additionally, Boost dice, which have more successes on their sides, must be added by special attacks or other game effects. Power dice, which only a monster can use, enable a power attack, which includes body slams, ram, rampage, stomp, swat, and throw. But don't throw the minis, please don't throw the minis. Power dice can be acquired a number of ways, including by destroying enemy models, destroying buildings, powering up, and other game effects. Back to the dice. Boost and power dice don't count against the action dice limit of an attack, so make sure you combo when you can. To resolve the attack, the player rolls the dice. 
they count the strikes and compare it with the target's defense value. If the strikes equal or exceed the target's defense, the attack hits. Attacks generally deal one damage point, but some power attacks deal even more. Units, assets, and buildings are destroyed and removed from the battle map when they take any damage. Monsters, however, track their health on their stat card. Finally, in the push phase, the active player may move remaining dice in their monster pool to their unit pool. Some other big concepts in Monster Apocalypse: Hyperform. Monster health is tracked on the bottom of its stat card. Once the damage exceeds its health on its starting side, known as the alpha form, it's flipped to its hyperform. Hyperform contains new, special rules and adjustments to monster attacks. Once a monster's damage falls below one, they are defeated. Combined unit attacks. Unit attacks can rarely defeat a monster's defense all by themselves, but two or more units can combine their attacks. Any units within attack range, a certain distance if blast, adjacent if brawl, can participate in one lead unit's attack. All their action dice are rolled at once. This unit attack still inflicts just one damage, but has a better chance of penetrating the monster's defenses. Cover. Units adjacent to buildings or friendly monsters gain plus one to their defense from blast attacks. This effect is not cumulative with multiple buildings or monsters and only applies to little units. Buildings. These can be destroyed if they suffer just one point of damage. If so, they're removed from the battle map and replaced with a two-sided debris tile. One side has harmless rubble, while the other has a hazard. Rubble only spawns if the building has the incombustible trait. All other buildings result in hazards, which inflict one point of damage to models which move into or collide with that space. Securing buildings. A player can secure a building if they have three units adjacent to that building with no adjacent enemy units, then they'll receive one power die into their power pool at the beginning of their next power phase. High mobility. This special trait allows models to move in special ways denoted by this symbol. These models are immune to damage from hazards when advancing, but take the damage if they end their move on that space. Other special rules exist for trigger abilities, collisions, and more. Additionally, a full catalog of power attacks starts on page 19 of the rulebook. Check them out. I mean, the body slam is pretty cool. Turns continue with players activating monsters, activating units, and smashing the world of the battle map into pieces. The game ends once one agenda's monsters have been destroyed, and their opponent wins the game. And that's the basics of Monster Apocalypse. I'm Becca Scott, and you can find me teaching other awesome games right here on Geek and Sundry. Thanks for watching, and have fun fighting out there.